when you give up explosives, that's costing you. So, you know, going out and practice, making sure that we're not giving any explosives up in practice, keeping them short, keeping them uh, to a minimum, it's going to help them on Saturday. Sal, so is there a common theme to giving up those explosive plays? Well, yeah, there is. It's if one guy doesn't get his gap right, and then us having enough leverage and speed and being able to turn the thing back inside, making plays on, on, on people when they catch the ball, not a guy missing a tackle, and everybody pursuing to the football. So, you know, the theme is real simple is that we got to quit giving up the explosive plays, and, uh, you know, we got to make put them in better position to make plays. You appear to be using a lot more of a four man line instead of a, a three four. Well, it's because of what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. You understand, a lot of people are playing us in sub stuff, sub people, which is three wide receivers, one tight end. So we're, you know, the kids feel comfortable in the four man front. So, you know, we're going to still have the ability to go to our three four look out of our nickel and we'll still be in our four man front versus nickel. So we'll have both, but it was. Uh, you know, with with three and uh, four wide receivers, it's better. Has it been a, has it been a benefit? Do you think? I think it's been good for the kids. You know what I'm saying? I think like anything else, they enjoy it. They know what the heck they're doing. So the most important thing is they go out there and they're able to execute. So when you see the numbers of, of the yards and points Tennessee's given, it's just up too much. It's too much. It's a, you know, it's a too much, and it goes with the coaches. You know, I got to put them in better position to make plays. You know, so I'll take the responsibility on that. And then you know, we got to go out and execute the call. So you know, it's giving up too many points. You got to get tighter coverage. You got to get better pass rush. We got to do everything right. Has this been a greater challenge than you thought it would be? It's a challenge no matter what you do in life. You know what I'm saying? You go out here, you have high high expectations and all that, and then, you know, I got to make these guys better. The defensive staff has to make the guys better, and they got to go out. And as a collective group, coaches, players, and all that, we got to work together and get this thing right. Sal, I know you said all along it would be a transition period, but, but the big plays this deep into the season, are you surprised at the regularity that they seem to still be occurring? Well, you know, I, you know, there's no surprise in football. You know what I'm saying? You don't want them to happen. They happen. There's nothing we can do about it. we got to try to fix it. So, you know, that's as simple as it can be. But to answer your question, you'd like to see it be minimal. You got Dan Gray a lot more action on Saturday. How, how did he look? I'm gonna tell you what, Dan Gray did a good job when he got in there. The younger guys, we're gonna look at everybody and see who's gonna give us an opportunity to have speed on the field and make some plays. Um, Rod Wilkes is another guy. Rod Wilkes did some good things. Rod's out there. He's doing good, and he had a good week of practice. He had a good, very good practice today. So you know, the more people we get get involved, the guys are gonna go out there and make plays. We're gonna give them a chance. Dan McCullers, another eight tackle game in, in SEC play. How far has he come since? He's been well, you know, I think he's coming long way and I think he can still go a lot further. I think that's what people don't understand. And you know, this kid is a very big kid. He's a strong kid. And if he just keeps on working and all that, he has a future. How about the performance of Herman Lathers? I was really tackles. pleased with what Herman did in this last game. And you know, he stayed healthy during it. He, he made a lot of plays. He was a leader out there. He had an interception. And uh, you know, Herman's one of those guys who takes great pride in his works up here watching tape, knows his opponent. So, when you study your opponent and you know your opponent, you're going to make plays. Speaking of opponents, what do you see out of Troy? Troy, I see a team that comes out that's very multiple. They're delivering the ball out of four wide receivers. They'll go to empty. They'll go into a two-back set, and they'll run the option. they got two different style quarterbacks. they got a quarterback who sits back there, number six, and slings it. And then they bring an athletic guy in, number seven, who does a great job of uh, running a little bit of a read zone, beating you with his feet. we got to be real careful with him when he's back there because he'll pull that ball down and he'll take off. Do you sense the players getting a little frustrated? No, I don't think that. I think like anything else, I, I, I think that they're going to go work and they're going to go practice and they're going to do what they have to do. And it's been like a great week of practice and they're working their butts off and we're coaching our butts off and we're just going to keep on going. So I'm doing something on Derek Ansley because he played at Troy. But uh -huh. In your experience at Alabama, what, what told you that? Let me just say this about Derek Ansley. When, he, when my son came to Alabama, he's the one that tutored my son. And my son's play speaks for itself. So that's what I think of Derek Ansley. So, you know, we can say, well, we can say whatever we believe in all that. That young, that guy right there took my kid and developed him in the system. And now the kid's right now playing on almost every single down and he's making plays. So, you know, what he did with my son and I know coming into Alabama was unbelievable. And the bottom line is the guy's a hell of a football coach. He's going to have a heck of a future. And I believe in him, and uh, his co and his players believe in him. And I'm just telling you, I know he played at Troy and all that. This is a big game for him and all that. And he's been coaching his heart off. But his future in this profession is going to be really high. All right, guys. Thanks, Coach. All right.